Many years ago, I met Jason Concepcion. I noticed his personality and his grating laugh, and I mentioned that he should consider hosting a show. He smiled, and I gave him my number. Years later, he called me and said, Devil, I have a show now, and I would like you to do a segment that I call Good Bad Advice. That show is called NBA Desktop, and I think you'll agree. It's incredible. Welcome to the NBA Desktop. <laughs> Game time. Hey, remember when it seemed like Dame and the Blazers were out? Let's go back in time to that moment. 118, 117, Clippers. Dame at the line, what happens? Two bricks, folks. Let's look at Pat Bev on the sidelines. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what time is it? Dame time, ha <laughs> ha, I'm Pat Beverly. I play in Timberlands on the beach. Then Dame said, after the game, I sent Pat Beverly home before. Paul George just got sent home by me last year in the playoffs. We remember the famous shot that he hit from the logo. And then the whole Oklahoma City Thunder franchise disintegrated before everyone's eyes. And Sam Presti cried. And he went home and he said, I'm not good enough. He said that to his wife. As the devil, I saw it. I was there. I love shit like that. And I watched. He said, honey, I fucked up. I had three MVPs, I kept the worst one, and now the team just got wrecked by Damian Lillard. You should have married your college boyfriend because you married me, and I'm a disgrace. That's what Damian Lillard did. Anyway, Dame and Paul George went at each other on Instagram. Paul George said, and you getting sent home this year, respect. Let's put a pin in that, Paul. Pat Beverly, Cancun on three, one, two, three. Would not be the first time that Pat Beverly was wrong. Then what happened? Dame Lillard erupted like a volcano. 51 points, 61 points, some other large number of points. And now what? The Blazers in the play-in game. Who's going to Cancun now? Probably the Blazers later, but not at this moment. And everybody was wrong. Tamper Town. Oh, here's Draymond Green talking about my son, Devin Booker. It's great to see Book playing well and Phoenix playing well, but get my man out of Phoenix. Draymond Green was fined $50,000 for that remark, and I love it. In fact, the only way I could love it more is if he just came out and said, come to Golden State and win titles. And now, host of The Ringer NBA Show, staff writer, The Ringer's Logan Murdoch, recently Draymond Green tampered, and he was fined 50 stacks for that. Was Draymond talking about the Warriors specifically in that case? Which is my theory, which I think is everybody's theory. I do not think that he was talking about the Warriors. I think that he was talking about the Phoenix Suns as a staff, record label, and a motherfucking crew. He has had a, a hit em up type rampage on the Phoenix Suns for the last few months. He has talked about how they're a poorly run organization, how they Whoa! fumbled the bag with Marquise Chris. They, he just talks bad about them all the time. I, I don't think that he wanted Devin to come to the Warriors. I think more so he was like, we need to get Devin the fuck up out of field. Right. Logan, thank you very much. Bless. Enter the bubble. Oh, Adrian Woj broke the news about who and who will not be allowed in the bubble now that the playoffs are set to begin. Players will be allowed to bring in family and, quote, established long-standing personal friends. Here's who isn't eligible to come into the bubble. Quote, any individual the player has not previously met in person <laughs> with whom the player has had limited in-person interactions. For example, known by the player only through social media or an intermediary. Really opening the door on how it works for everybody out there. <laughs> Here's the thing, and I think this is great. We've got to protect the health of our players. What if I got thrown some neck once by this person? and we had a decent conversation like about restaurants in the area. And that went on for like 10 minutes before and after the act. But we really had a connection in that short amount of time. I think that should be allowed. Faye Blocks. Z the Creator <laughs> tweeted, why are you such a weirdo? This is directed at KD. You are too wealthy for this. You really went and followed my girl. That's why she blocked you, weirdo, Kevin Durant. My bad, I accidentally pressed follow and liked all of her pics my phone tripping. Kevin Durham has always been extremely online and he used to be like, I'm gonna do that through 17 burners. And now he's just like, I own it. I am that guy and I'm just gonna do it. I own it. I am the dude. I am a troll. I am Kevin Durant. I love it. I fave it. Jason, if you don't fave this, who wrote this? Oh, this was great. So the Phoenix Suns had the families of their players do the starting lineups. Yeah. 
This is a great idea. Phoenix Suns event staff and day planning staff and, and game day production, get your royalties now because this is about to be ripped off by every fucking team in the league. I hope you guys are getting a raise out of this or some kind of pin or a little trophy that says we invented that shit because every team in the league gonna rip this off. This was great, I hate it. Oh, here we go, I've been waiting for this. Here is Kyle Kuzma, who LeBron recently said needs to be the Lakers' third best player. Here's what the third best player on the Lakers had this to say about Jesus Christ. Um, I think uh, Jesus could be in front of me and I'll probably still shoot, so. <laughs> How dare you. With more on this, let's go live to our youth pastor. What's up guys? How's everyone doing? Um, let me ask you guys something. Um, who do you think is the best defender in the history of the world? Oh, uh, is it Dennis Rodman? No, 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 close, close. Uh, no, but uh, it's not Dennis Rodman. It's not, uh, it's not Takibe Mutombo. It's actually my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes sin, you know, he it, it comes at you full court press, you know what I mean? And I'm talking girls, I'm talking beer, all the bad stuff, man. And sometimes you just need Jesus Christ on your team, man. He needs to be on your team because he's the best defender, not only of your heart, but of your mind, keeping you pure. Everyone, just everyone do me a favor. Just bow your heads for just one second. I just need everybody in the, in the audience to close their eyes. All right, who's ever, who's ever felt sad? Let me hear it. Oh, Kevin Durant. Jesus was like 4'9", never played basketball. I hope Kuz could shoot over him. Actually, we have, let's, let's, it's been a while since I actually saw uh, Jesus in life. Let's look at his stats. Hold on a second. And now, the incredibly funny, unbelievably talented, Katie Hi. Nolan. Katie. Hey! We were recently nominated for Emmy. We were in the same green room for what felt like three or four years. I know. Um, first of all, I thought you should have won. A Sandlot, like, interactive thing by MLB won. Set the scene this way, because I did not think this was gonna happen. At the Emmys, because they went digital, yes. they were like, we're gonna load you into the green room. And I'm like, okay, cool. Thinking like, there's no way it's just me and a bunch of the nominees that I've never met before. Yeah. But it is exactly it was that. that. Are we doing this? Are we talking shit about them? Or are we, we just gonna talk say like this shit? As happens in any room full of people who have one thing in common and know nothing else about each other, it was like people rose to the top, and then there were the tertiary people, and then there were the yous and the me's. Yeah. But even there was a division between you and I. That's right. Because you were addressed. Somebody said, Jason, I don't think we've said hello to you yet. And I was sitting there and I'm like, no one has said hello to me. And then they were like, let's talk about our wives. And I would like to raise this conspiracy theory with you. I don't think the category was rigged, but I do think okay. certain people knew who won beforehand. Now let me say Why, this because Major League Baseball, the guy who accepted it was standing at a podium yes, with a written that's exactly speech and was reading out of teleprompter? Yes. Exactly that. that. You to believe because you were known? on your couch, I was in my office against the white wall. <laughs> Another guy was just in his living room. Ernie Johnson was not there. It was just a live video of his chair and never once appeared. And then when Major League Baseball won, they were not even in the green room and all of a sudden they're accepting yeah. in front of a podium. Yeah, that was the crazy thing is that they weren't in the green room. And I'm like, we surely would have seen a man standing at in the podium. In front of a podium. And we would have gone, oh, so I can go back to my day because that guy's going to win. I think they knew what was going on. And I think Ernie Johnson knew because he, again, what a oh, flex Ernie by Johnson him. Ernie Johnson was complicit. He was <laughs> complicit. He knew. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. You're awesome. You Thank you so Emmy. much for doing it. You should have won it. You should have won, won it. No, you really should have won it. You guys, been yours. You guys no, are so the best. hilarious. And now, you ready? Whenever yeah. you're ready. And now. And now. <laughs> and now. <laughs> 